would make a correction before that. Um, but also the way that Lou and Dub were able to kind of throw them a curveball late defensively and we were able to do to stop them without the structure. Yeah, um, we, uh, we stuck to our game plan. Um, I would say through the first two quarters and halfway through the, the third, pretty much, um, then got away from it a little bit. I started getting out of transition, getting downhill, um, and it really opened up their three-point shooting. And then they had some momentum going to the fourth, and uh, I think we did a good job of like course correcting uh, and getting back into the game, what we had done previously to build the big lead. Um, just speaks to our, our maturity and our, our poise as a group to. Um, be able to get back on track and not wait till after the game to say, and yeah, we should have fixed it. We was fixing it in the moment, and, and we did it in time to get a W. And then, uh, Doug, just the, the way that they were kind of forced to go small because of Chet, and then the way that Josh was able to punish them um, offensively. And just what did you make of kind of the, the swirling dynamics of this game and, and how you guys seem to have an answer to all the things they tried to do? Uh, yeah. It's fun being in an atmosphere like that and being in a game where you have to make so many like in-game adjustments and uh, kind of adapt to each other. So um, I think that was really good for us. Um, I think any time you have a game where we constantly have to change and see what the other team is doing uh, speaks to our versatility and just kind of how we're kind of everybody's ready to play. And uh, I thought we did a good job of, you know, kind of having a all five mentality who was out there and, you know, kind of playing off each other. Yeah, um, a little banged up in my quad um, since the Utah game. Um, but yeah, just take it day by day, see how I feel when I wake up. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, and, and even with that said, through the hobble, through you know, all that, you kind of had to see at the end of the game where you get the three, um, come down with Kirk Jones, and that kind of breaks open the game. Just as it's going on, with how you're feeling, like just describe that sequence to me and just the end of the game when you started, like, visibly hobbling. Um, try not to focus on it. Uh, I think at that point it was like two minutes left in the game, so. Just not be a liability out there. Um, try to be aggressive. Yeah, and mo most of it's just trying not to think about it and just play the game, read and react, um, and do everything you can to impact the game in a positive way. It, in the last two minutes, you try to fight through those two minutes and figure it out after. Yeah, and, and Jay, the last one for me. Uh, Mark was just in here talking about, uh, you know, it's an 82 game season. You're going to have games as crazy as this where, you know, beyond the playoff environment. Lose a, a 20 point lead, it's just going to happen across the 82 game season. Uh, I just think back to the Dallas game where they had the 30 0 run. I don't know if you guys need to lead in games like this, but, but with games like this, like what you're saying, you guys are becoming comfortable with that. I know you don't want to give up a 20 point lead, but would you say you guys are becoming comfortable with games like this? Um, I think we've seen the I think we've seen a pretty bad end of it, like you were saying with the Dallas game. You know, that was like kind of almost unheard of. So I wouldn't say comfortable with it. I think we just understand basketball is a game of runs. Uh, you know, you hit a couple threes in a 20 point game and, you know, it's almost single digits. So uh, that's just basketball. I think that's like average for the league swings anyway. Uh, so I think we kind of understand that, you know, we're going to be on the verge of some of them. We're going to be on the other end, it's just basketball. You know, we understand that. And I thought we did a good job of just kind of sticking with it during that whole stretch. Yeah. Earlier you were talking about the versatility of this group on the defensive end and just how many weapons you guys had. You also had three guys finish with 20 or more points tonight. Just what's it like for you guys to play on a team with, A, it could be anybody's night, any given night, there's just so many threats on the It's fun. <laughs> uh, I think it's just a testament to guys staying ready and, um, yeah, just guys staying ready and, uh, you know, I think everybody puts in a lot of hard work kind of behind the scenes to be ready for those opportunities. Gives everybody a lot of space on the court to get to spots they want to be at and uh, 
something that we continue to kind of harp on. Also, probably uh, just us moving the ball as a unit, trusting each other to make the right play. I think we generate really good shots when that happens, and uh, you know, I think when we get open looks, we knock them down at a pretty high rate. We've seen throughout the year different levels of adversity you guys have had to work through. When you're when a team is facing a run like that, what are you guys tapping into in those moments just to, to stay calm? In this, this um, taking a possession at a time. Um, when a team gets rhythm and momentum, um, you just you have to have a little bit more focus on both ends of the floor. Um, everything matters a little bit more, especially in their building like uh, shot selection, communication defensively. Um, so we try to focus on like the little things um, and then focus and, and just being together through it. Bobo run to, to close the game after they go on a massive run to take a lead. What did it take just down the stretch of that? Yeah, I mean, um, we, we got out to a pretty decent 20-point lead, um, and then they started hitting shots in, that, in the you know, midway through to the end of the third, and the crowd got involved. They started getting confidence, feeling good about themselves, and um, they came all the way back, got in front. But I think um, our guys you know, showed great you know, mental toughness throughout those stretches to, to not fold. Uh, I thought the way we responded, um, started getting stops, getting good looks offensively, um, kind of flipped the game back in our way, uh, our momentum our way. Um, kind of, you know, got got the game back on the right, you know, path for us. So, um, teams are going to make runs. Obviously, you don't want to give up a twenty point lead. You don't want to get down twenty points. But, um, you know, the NBA players are talented. They can make runs. And I thought we uh, weathered the storm well. You know, when they got the deficit back. You guys have seen a lot of adversity runs of this sort throughout the season. What is it about this group that has such a common poise and maturity about them? Yeah, we don't flinch. We we understand. Um, we can be on either side of it. Um, as I said, you know, it's the NBA. Guys can make shots any given night. And um, tonight we started hot. We got out to a 20 point lead. Then they got hot. And um, it can be like that every night. And um, you've just got to be able to um, stay level headed through, you know, a swing either way. And uh, we did that tonight. You know, their crowd got loud, got involved. And I thought we, we did a really good job, you know, start that fourth going forward. Um, to really kind of get them get them out of the game and um, and and make them take tough shots, make them guard multiple actions, um, and you know guys make big plays down the stretch, and we're able to close it out. Definitely. I mean, anytime any player sees the ball go on the rim, you start to get confidence, and the rim starts to become bigger, and um, and those shots start to feel easier. But um, as I said, the same way a team's going to run up, you know, shots don't always, you know, fall. They don't. They don't always miss. So um, just just taking the right ones. I mean, um, you know, seeing different looks. Bigs got to me. Guards got to me. Um, just trying to take what the defense gives, and um, yeah, just keep shooting with confidence. You know, my guys trust me. Coaches trust me to, to step out there and, and, and shoot them, and um, just got to continue to be confident with it. Whether they go in or not. Josh, just the, the versatility that this roster has for you guys to be able to play different ways throughout a game to make a late defensive switch like you had with, with Lou and Dub and to change up Shea's minutes. Just, I don't know. When you look at this team, obviously you're still so young, but uh, how does it feel to have so many options and, and uh, choices that you can make throughout a game? It's great. It's a big luxury to have. Um, you know, when coach looks down the bench and he's got multiple guys he can go to at, at any given point in the game. And we kind of spoke about it the other day where we've had you know ten different guys close a game throughout the year, and that just speaks to the depth that we have. And um, we can throw multiple different lineups and um, the versatility that the guys have. And um, you know, we saw it tonight. You know, Doug got in foul trouble. You, you put Lou. You know, that's another elite defender in the league to guard. You know, one of the best um, downhill guys like Zion. So um, it's great having weapons like that that we can um, you know chop and change. And and, you know, those guys were awesome tonight. And, uh, you know, especially um, as we get to the back end of the year, um, a lot of guys are going to be in a lot of different roles. And um, it's very important that, you know, when a guy's number's called, they're ready to come in and make an impact. And it's been that way all year. And uh, guys have been really good, you know, in that area. Just kind of along those same lines, on the offensive side, you guys had three guys score 20 or more points. What's it like playing with that level of, you know, options in terms of threats offensively? Yeah, it's it's extremely fun. I mean, um, same defensively. I think, 
you know, it puts teams in a bind with, with how to guard us. And I think that's why we've seen so many different looks because we've got a lot of, you know, versatile guards on that end of the floor. Um, teams are, you know, starting to guard us in ways that they've probably never practiced, never done before. When Whether they cross match, whether they guard normally, whether they start blitzing pick and rolls, it's, it, you know, it forces them to, to play kind of out of their normal defense. And um, it speaks to the group we've got. We've got a special team and, um, you know, when you have a versatile lineup like we have, um, it forces the, uh, teams to scramble and, and try to get the right look for us. And um, we keep throwing different things at them, and um, hopefully it wins us games. Mark really credited your defense in, in the second half and the fourth quarter. Tonight, the two-way impact guarding Murphy and, and some of the different things that you had to do. How do you feel like you've grown this season on that end to be able to deliver the guy in this type of moment? Yeah, a lot of it's, you know, effort. I think, um, you know, maybe early in my career, early this season, um, it kind of wavered and, you know, I let the offensive side impact the defensive side and um, just, just kind of getting out of that habit and, um, you know, playing each possession as its own. And, um, you know, it's always fun guarding those, you know, talented scorers like he is, an, an athletic guy who can shoot the ball, get on the rim, and um, it, it, it makes me better, you know, having to guard someone like that. So, um, you know, I love, I love that type of challenge. And, um, I think just continuing to be, um, you know, positive on that end of the floor where, you know, obviously Lou and Dub are going to guard the main guys every night, but um, just being there to support them and, you know, obviously depending on who I'm guarding, um, helping more, helping less, um, just, just trying to do my part and, and make life easy as possible for those guys on the defensive end. 12-0 run to end this one. I, I want to ask you on two levels. First of all, the, the poise to do it after the run that they did, they put on you. And then also just the tactical of how you guys were able to get stop after stop late. Um, well, I mean, great fortitude by the team. I thought the guys showed great toughness. Obviously, uh, we were able to build a great lead. We got off to a great start. Credit them. They were really, really sharp in the third, especially made shots, put a lot of game pressure on us, took a lead. Um, and then I just thought down the stretch, you know, we just chopped away, you know, a lot of game left at four and a half minutes when we had the timeout and the guys showed, you know, great toughness. I thought Lou on Williamson um, down the stretch was really effective, picking him up, making him work uh, to get the ball, making him work to get to spots, uh, having Dub and the versatility to put him on McCollum, you know, those guys being able to interchange like that on those two guys is pretty impressive and that was uh, a really important uh, thing for us down the stretch. They didn't play Valvin Judas at all in the second half. Yep. Um, we've talked about the way that Chet impacts things, but um, the extreme nature of them having to basically play small all second half, what do you think that did to the game and, and maybe speaks to the way that uh, Chet causes problems? Yeah, he's a tough matchup, you know, and um, you know, obviously they tried him on Josh a little bit, and with the way Josh shot the ball, uh, it makes it hard to put him there, you know. So, uh, you know, I thought, you know, we did a good job of attacking uh, when he was in the game and trying to neutralize his size on the other end of the floor. Uh, but credit them. I thought they made really good adjustments uh, to put themselves in good positions there in the second half. But, um, you know, uh, fortunately we were able to come out of here with a win. It was a tough game. Well, just want to ask you about uh, kind of swap. Well, it felt like the swap shade. Yep. Um, I, you know, like I told you guys around All Star break, you know, we need to stay aggressive uh, in understanding, you know, all the tools in the toolbox with our team, and um, you know, that's one thing we haven't looked at, um, and we wanted to take a look at it. We wanted to see what Shea looked like on shorter rotations. We wanted to see what Dub looked like in longer rotations. We wanted to see. Um, how that changed uh, our substitution beginning of the second quarter, and it continues to make us a moving target for our opponents. You know, it's something that um, the more we can be nimble and the more adaptive our players can be, it makes it very difficult to predict what we're going to do. Um, we're going to continue to be aggressive in looking at different things, uh, and they're not all going to work. But um, you know, like I said, we're going to be aggressive in trying to figure out what the best uh, options are for our team, and we're always looking to expand those options and not you know contract them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. No. No, it wasn't a rest thing. Um, he was live. I just thought with the way the start we got off to, 
um, with the groups that were out there. I just kind of rolled with them, uh, and it kind of drifted him out of the rotation. And I, it wasn't necessarily pre-planned. Um, in fact, I was planning on using him, but we just got we were in such a good rhythm. Um, yeah, you know, I just rolled with what the you know the guys were doing. Uh, and we've been playing 11, which shortens some guys' rotations. It makes it really hard for them to show us what they can do. You know, so we floated K. Rich out. We floated J. Will out uh, at different times. And that kind of loosens up uh, the bench for us. We ended up doing that tonight. It wasn't pre-planned, like I said. But um, we're going to continue to do that just to give guys longer runs, longer opportunities. But he'll be back in there tomorrow. I know guys need to leave and come back with after that we deficits. But wins of this nature where, you know, maybe have something like a 20-point lead. Yep. Um, you know, it, in 82 games, you're just going to get such a diverse um, sample of things, and uh, you're going to have to play a lot of different types of games. You're going to play with leads. You're going to play from behind. Uh, we'd like to play with leads as much as possible, and we'd like to hold leads as much as possible. Uh, we've done a good job of that this year, I think. I don't think we've really given up uh, leads of that nature the way that we did tonight. Uh, but you have to be able to handle a lot of different situations and competition. And I thought our guys just showed great toughness and poise uh, in a pretty hostile environment against a very you know sharp opponent that had a lot of momentum. Um, and for us to hang in there long enough to give ourselves a chance for the game to turn again uh, and to string together the stops that we did down the stretch, I thought was really impressive by the guys. I wanted to go back to what you talked about earlier about the decision to put Lou on, on Williamson tonight. Yep. So many options of guys you could put on Williamson. J-Dub, yep. him, Kimrich. What does that say about this group that there are just so many guys that you could employ and have make those sort of decisions out there on the floor? Yeah, again, we want to expand our options always. You know, we don't want to be a team that's that's limiting our own options. You know, we want to be a team that expands them. And sometimes, like I said, in the exploration of that, we're going to trip on some stuff that's really good and we're going to we're going to trip on some stuff that doesn't work uh, but we're going to learn in the process we're going to expand our team's capacity in the process uh, you know i just we found that making adjustments late in games uh, it's a hard time for teams to adapt you know and if we can be the more adaptive team in those situations we think there's an advantage there uh, they had a little bit of a rhythm attacking us with uh, the matchups as they were, and so we flipped the matchup. Uh, and I thought it bought us, you know, a couple possessions there. They had a hard time calibrating to it. I thought, um, and, and you know, it's a credit to our guys and their uh, adaptive adaptability. And then um, just wanted to ask you about Josh. Asked you about him after the, the Milwaukee game. He's been yeah. together a really nice stretch here. What are you seeing? From him? Well, he's bombing in shots, you know, that's the first thing, you know, and there's ups and downs in shooting. Obviously, there's a lot of variance in shooting, but I give him a lot of credit. He's worked hard on it. Um, he's had the, the schemes of people leaving him open, which I think is a really difficult thing, you know, especially as somebody that's a developing shooter. And he's just kind of stuck with it uh, through the ups and downs of the season. And for him to have a night like that shooting the ball, um, I'm really, really happy for him. And I also, you know, he guarded Murphy for much of the second half. He played the entire fourth quarter. Uh, didn't see the need to sub him for defense because of the way that he was competing on that end. Um, and, you know, I thought he was a real two-end player tonight, you know, and, and that was huge for us. I mean, we don't win that game without the efforts that he gave on defense and obviously the shot making on offense. Anybody else? Just one. Go ahead. Um, good. Get the mic. There we go. Comment on the, the nature of the, the 12 0 close um, in terms of, you know, a lot of teams like what happened Jimmy Butler or some kind of alpha dog that kind of takes over on the stretch and just seem like really evenly distributed. Yeah. Um, well, we do have that if we want to, if we want to go to it. It's not that we don't have it. Um, but we want, again, we want to always expand our options. You know, we don't want to be a team that's just um, shrinking our options in a self inflicted way. Um, and, you know, we've got different guys that can do different things um, in all parts of the game. But uh, I thought, you know, Dub has shown an unbelievable ability to control the game down the stretch. It allows us to move Shea around the floor, use him as a screener, use him in different ways, move Chet around the floor. Uh, and then, you know, Giddy in transition with the kick aheads and Dort as a play finisher, screener. Uh, we found a nice little rhythm. And again, we want to look at a lot of different things. We don't want to give our opponent a, an opportunity to get into a defensive rhythm against us. Uh, and it's going to open up cracks for Shea when the ball comes back to him on some plays uh, like it did on the three 
that he hit. So, um, you know, again, that's the mentality across everything, tactically, lineups, everything we do. We're just trying to expand as much as possible. Yep. Not to the point of not playing, obviously. You know, he was out there tonight, but he's banged up, you know, for sure. He's not uh, 100%. So, I mean, we're monitoring it. We're obviously um, really wise with those decisions. Um, he's He obviously was good enough to play tonight, um, but, you know, he's he's certainly not 100%. Um, I'll, I'm not, I'll let him speak on it. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go there. But I, I do know tonight he was not 100. percent 